The doom and gloom around the world, and despite the IMF's lowering of its growth forecasts for global growth, one country is still on fire. The IMF raised Peru's 2012 growth forecast to 6% from 5.5. Joining us live from the IMF's annual meeting in Tokyo is Peruvian Finance Minister, Finance Minister Miguel Castilla. Welcome, Minister, to the show. Uh, let me start by asking you, how's the mood there in Tokyo? Well, I just uh, arrived. Uh, it's uh, the mood. Uh, I haven't had a chance to interact with colleagues, but uh, obviously there's uh, worries about the situation in, in Europe, uh, and in particular the, uh, in the, the, the strength, uh, you know, the, uh, the capacity of the European governments to undergo the austerity measures. And China, for us, is a critical uh, country that determines very much our performance uh, looking forward. China, obviously, a big part of the growth for Peru's economy. But I, I want to first start by asking you, this downgrade in global growth, how is Peru bucking the trend of what's happening around the world? Or perhaps I should ask it in another way, is what is Peru doing right? Well, I think we've learned the lessons from the past. And, and I think there are three components uh, for our growth performance. Uh, the first being uh, maintaining sound macroeconomic fundamentals. We have uh, vast cushions of liquidity. Central bank has accumulated uh, over a third of uh, reserves uh, of GDP. We have a fiscal surplus, and our net debt to GDP is uh, below 8%. Uh, uh, we have low inflation, um, notwithstanding the shock that we've received from uh, foodstuffs that have uh, increased their prices. So that's one thing, sound macroeconomic fundamentals. The second is a uh, bet towards openness. Uh, we've shied away uh, protectionist measures. Uh, and we have, our, have a very open economy, both in the current account, trade account, and the capital account. And the third is an enabling environment uh, for private investment, uh, both domestic and foreign. We've seen a, a surge in, in FDI coming into our country in the first half, close to 7% of GDP. Uh, and this is quite important and boosts our, our growth uh, prospects for the future. Uh, in addition to that, in the near term, we have a uh, growing uh, 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 middle class. Uh, we have a construction boom, a consumption boom, and I think this partially is mitigating uh, a downward trend in our tradable sector due to uh, lower terms of trade and a declining growth from our main trading partners. Minister Castilla, you mentioned the, the construction boom. How much of that is related to the mining business? I know that's very important to the country. Uh, somewhat it is. Uh, the other is uh, due to uh, a strong uh, public works uh, uh, fiscal stimulus that we uh, undertook uh, last year preventively. Uh, I think we're also seeing a, a growth in the uh, spending capacity and uh, a mortgage market that is growing in size, quite st still quite small for Latin American standards, 3% of GDP. But I think uh, construction uh, boom is a uh, is something that is uh, underneath our growth. Uh, it has grown in double digits the past few months. Uh, it will slow down eventually, but uh, it's sustaining our, our growth, uh, our growth project projections for this year uh, in, um, over 6% and for next year, 6%. In 2009, Peru signed a free trade agreement with China. How has that benefited Peru? Very much so. I think this uh, has been a way to diversify our, our trade with, with China uh, 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 beyond uh, commodities. Um, the past decade, our, our trade with China, our exports with China, have grown 17-fold. And I think uh, primarily concentrated in, in raw materials, fish meal, uh, copper, uh, gold, and, and other minerals. Uh, I think uh, with the free trade agreement, uh, it's been a boost towards FDI. Uh, where there's uh, complementarities between both economies. Uh, I recently visited Shanghai, and uh, there's a lot of interest in Chinese uh, investors going to our country. And uh, I think uh, part of the uh, free trade agreement uh, uh, will enable this FDI to materialize and will help also diversify towards other uh, goods that we're exporting uh, beyond uh, natural resources. So now I want to ask about the big elephant in the room. You're there at the meetings. Europe obviously making very big headlines there. I know you have a, tree trade, a, tr a free trade agreement with Europe as well that was just approved in June, but how has that affected the relationship and b better yet, the economy for Peru? Is there anything that Peru is doing to try to prevent itself from being overly affected by the slowdown of what's happening in Europe? 
Well, for, for once, we are trying to diversify our trading partners. We're trying to increase trade with our neighbors. Intra-regional trade within Latin America has gone up. Uh, uh, obviously, we have um, uh, neighbors that are pursuing policies that hinder this uh, intra-regional trade. And we're trying to uh, have a, a growing internal demand-driven economy. Uh, I think that's uh, ways to mitigate. Uh, we are, are shying away protectionist measures. Obviously, we have also a surge in capital inflows coming into our country. And that's something uh, of concern for us. We have uh, an appreciated exchange rate as most emerging markets uh, that depend on uh, on natural resources and we're trying to uh, be able to cope with this uh, slurge of a couple of inflows that hurt our tradable sector but uh, w even with that factor in mind I think uh, improvements in productivity uh, efficiency uh, uh, boosting our infrastructure gap uh, among other measures are the ones that we're taking along and I think those are going to help us mitigate uh, any negative effect from uh, a lower growth prospect in the world. Well, certainly best of luck to you. Finance Minister of Peru, Miguel Castilla, thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully we will see you in Washington, D.C. Have great meetings over there in Tokyo.